welcome, welcome. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. I always like to tell everybody thank you. Anytime somebody spends time with me and listening to me, I always appreciate it. So the topic today that I wanted to talk to everybody about is positioning to win. Um, how I've been training traders and kind of the methodology I'm using now in these days to get everybody pointed in the right direction. So with that being said, we are talking about uh, profits. We're talking about loss. So risk disclaimer, I want everybody to be aware that they have to um, understand the risk inherent in the markets they trade. And, and it's always my number one concern, what is your risk? And you need to know and understand your risk. So a few of the things that I want to look at, how I took trading and, and how I approached the trading um, from a position of strength. I w I'm going to introduce you guys today to a daily trade model I use. So in the brief introduction, I uh, mentioned that I sold a trade model back in the mid-2000s to a hedge fund. I traded for this hedge fund for a while, and they ended up buying my trade model. But it's the same trade model I use in my service, and um, it's had a really nice, it's, uh, it's been about four, uh, 14 to 15 months since I converted it to a more of a retail platform. And uh, it's done pretty solid p and L. It's did a uh, 40,000, just over 40,000 in, in 2017. But I'm going to talk about some of the steps that are created for doing that. I want to look at what it looks like to have a trade model as a foundation. I want to look at a different way to frame my charts, how I look at things a little different than a lot of retail. And, and again, it comes back to that theme of um, how to position yourself to win. So much of what we do is decided before we ever go into a trade. Um, and then I'm going to talk a bit about the, some of the shorter term mentalities that I use. So a little bit about me. I know you got a little brief bit in introduction, but I want to tell you a little bit how I started in this business. Um, I graduated from Florida State University, 1993. I did not study finance. I studied international affairs. I studied German. I enjoyed anything international. I studied in Switzerland. I actually graduated from um, the, my final classes were at the University of Innsbruck in Austria. So I love that. Uh, but I didn't really study finance during college. I did a lot of entry level jobs right out of college and nothing really stuck. And then I made my way to New York and New Jersey. And um, this is the late 90s. And I had several kind of entry level things, but I worked as a, um, I was starting to be a broker at Morgan Stanley and it was not my thing. And uh, I actually did not study very hard for my Series 7. I, uh, I got a 69 on my Series 7, and if anybody's ever tried to be a broker, you know that if you get hired and don't pass, you're immediately let go. This was okay with me because what my heart really wanted to do about halfway through my studies uh, at Morgan Stanley, I was taken t by a friend to Wall Street, and I went to a trading floor, a prop trading floor, a bunch of younger guys and gals like myself, and I knew immediately that that is what I wanted to do. So I did not, uh, I will tell you kind of a little less than happy that I did not give my full efforts to, uh, to my studies while, while trying to pursue a career in brokering. I sat and watched numbers and studied charts and did all these things with these resources, but I knew that that was the job for me. So once I, uh, once I didn't pass my Series 7, I, um, I went and pursued a job there. Now, later on in, in the career, I did take the Series 7 and, and uh, passed, and so I, I, I know I was fully capable, but it was kind of what started me off in this business. I started trading uh, at a prop firm, and I took my own money in there. I borrowed money from a family member. Um, my mom was very generous and started me, and she had no idea what I was doing, but generously agreed to back me with a $50,000 account. That's what I had to do to start trading. And it, I was allowed to draw down 15K. That was what the risk that we agreed. I was allowed to draw down $15,000. And I didn't have a lot of background in this. Um, there was not a great education program at the firm. It was pretty much just open the doors and they would charge you for your seat. Well, I did a lot of studying, a lot of work. There were a few successful people in the firm at the time. And I would pick up whatever I could from them. But I was really self-taught very early on. And what I did was I lost money on almost every single day in those first several months. I never lost big. I never lost big. I read a lot of books. One of my favorite books, which I'm sure many traders have read, is Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. Just an all-time great story. Um, maybe not the way it ended up, but there were a lot of great lessons within that book. 
And the one thing I knew about myself, even really early on, was that I was risk adverse, right? I was, I was really adverse to risk while in a business where you had to put on a certain amount of risk. And what I did was I lost money very frequently, very early on, on a consistent basis. And I was really down to the point where I was about to have to stop because I got my account down to 35000 and change. And one day during that run, I actually tra traded below the 35000 number. I never closed the day below it. But I traded down below 35000 finished the day back above. And again, I thought I was on about my last day of this experiment with trading. And I had a real kind of heart to heart with myself. I had a long train ride back to New Jersey from the city. And I said, look, this is absolutely the last time. You either know how to do this and go in and do it tomorrow or you don't. And so what I did that next day, it was so um, make or break for me. Said if, if you don't finish positive this day, you're, you're most likely done. And I finished positive. And it wasn't big, right? You have to understand it wasn't big. It was maybe $50, maybe $100. But I strung together several of those days, several of those days. So all of a sudden, the point where I'm looking at basically having to give up on this business, like so many retail traders have done. Believe me, I know the plight. I know what it's like to trade with absolute scared money or you know very little capital to deal with. And it didn't turn in one night. But what did turn was the, the foundation of doing it something that could be repeated. And then from that point, it's simply scalable, right? So I take my account from 35100 to 35200 You do that for several days in a row, and all of a sudden my account was sitting at thirty six grand. And believe me, the difference between thirty six grand and thirty five was enormous. It was probably the biggest thousand dollars of my career. But all of a sudden, once you could repeat that process, 36,000 to 37 was not nearly as big of a jump. So once I'm trading consistently, remember I talked about it being scalable. All I did was go from 100 shares to 200 shares. And the movement from 37 to 40 was not nearly as long. The movement from 40 to 45 and so on. Well, once I'd run my account back up to about 70,000 in profits, uh, or in 70,000 in total, and I was taking money out along the way, the firm um, didn't want me to trade my money anymore. They wanted me to trade their money. So I, they had no risk in me at this stage. They've, they'd already seen what I could do. So that began my career of trading prop for uh, somebody else and trading other people's money. So they made me an offer I just couldn't refuse. They offered me a million bucks to trade at a 70% payout. And I thought, hey, it's, it's golden. I'll do it. So that began my career. Well, within about 18 months, I was the number two producer um, at the firm and uh, consistently one of the top three guys in P&L, but number one in terms of consistency. So what I did that was so different than many people back then, this was, again, the late 90s. Uh, this was day trading equities. This was the, the Internet craze back when stocks were just flying all over the place. Amazon, Yahoo, CMGI, you name it, I traded it. Um, it was a pretty exciting time on Wall Street, and then uh, 2000 hit, but this takes us up to that 2000 area, and I became very profitable. I went one time 24 straight months and only lost money two of those trading days in the 24-month period. It was, it was absolutely renowned in, in, in our circles to, to, to do that, and it had never really been done before. Um, it's like a lot of what you hear today about J.P. Morgan's quant type trading. I mean, those guys just simply don't lose money, the, the computer programs. So I always prided myself on being very consistent, being very risk adverse. And people saw that in me. And I was offered an opportunity to trade at a hedge fund in the early 2000s that traded foreign exchange as well as um, stocks. So I began, that was what began my career in foreign exchange. From there, I was asked by a, a couple wealthy families um, to manage some of their personal money. Now, this was the first time I'd ever managed money outside of a prop environment where people you know, were basically um, looking at you every day and you know, what's going on with my money. So it began my career as a manager. So that was my first $400,000 managing other people's money like that. And I grew that business to 106, I think it was 106 million at its peak 
And then I eventually sold the uh, model to a hedge fund in the mid-2000s. Since then, I've been doing trader education. I still trade my accounts. A uh, few, few family and friends I trade managed accounts. And, um, and that's what I do. And I've had a phenomenal time. I, I'm probably more excited about my business right now in terms of teaching people and doing what I do um, than at any point in, in, in my recent career. So it's, it's a really a fun time to be involved in markets. It's an exciting time and uh, very happy about kind of the directions. But uh, the, the bottom line is I have a lot of experience from multiple corners of, of this business. I'm not somebody that uh, came up out of a different job and said all of a sudden I found the trading secrets. It's, it's not a secret. But what it really is, it's consistency and it's a foundation. So I talked to you before about um, my trade model. Now, this was something I developed back in the um, 2000s. The, the idea was trend following in nature. So this trend following approach, so I run it currently on 11 different markets. I run it on a mixture of foreign exchange, spot FX, and um, futures markets. So it has... Euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, Aussie dollar, Euro yen cross, sterling yen cross. It has gold futures, E-mini futures, uh, the bonds, the 30-year, the long bond futures, and it has crude oil. So it, it has a nice mixture. But what it does and what I've, what I've seen it really allow my subscribers to do is it gives you this foundation, something that you start off with that's been able to produce profit something that points you in the correct direction um, a good amount of the time. But the most important part, right, this is the key, this is the key to profitability in what I do, it's that when you deal, when you trade, this is, the, this is the one I would tell you, and it shouldn't really be a secret, but it really is kind of the key to success. Risk less than you stand to make. And think about how that works. And I'm going to show it to you on some charts. I'm going to get to some charts in a little bit. But I want to talk to you a little bit about that foundation, what it looks like. So this trade model, through every one of these trades that was put on to generate this P&L. Now, these are, you have to understand what it's based on. It's based on either one contract. So if you were to buy crude oil, it's based on you buying one contract. It's not based on you buying crude oil and buying it times 15 contracts to get that P&L. If you buy euro dollar, it's based on you buying one standard lot, which is 100,000 euros, um, so that each tick is worth 10 bucks, right? A full big figure gives you $1,000. That's what it's based on. Right, so it's very doable to the retail trader coming in. So a lot of people will ask me, well, what kind of capital does it take to produce this P&L? And again, this comes back to the idea of retail, in my mind, always asking the wrong questions. It shouldn't be, how do I mimic your P&L? The idea should be, how do I mimic the foundation that creates this? Because remember what I said earlier, when I was at 35000 in my trading account, um, in the late 90s, I wasn't thinking about what it takes to produce a million in P&L. What I was thinking about is how am I consistently going to be profitable? Because once I'm consistently profitable, I can scale it. That's the one beauty this business has. You're not really going to find yourself as a retail trader challenged to put on size that, that cannot be handled by the market, right? That's the beautiful part. So it kind of doesn't matter what your capital is. What matters is, can you take the lessons, the understanding, and, and execute what's going on here, right? So if, if the model, if the daily model gives you a signal to buy euros at 1760, does it matter whether you put on a million euros or 10,000 euros? No, because if that trade is going to, over time, be profitable, the 10,000 euros eventually is going to work itself up to putting on a position of 20 which eventually is going to work itself up to putting on a position of 40. So the idea is foundationally growing it. So you can see what the model did here. The model lost money in October. It lost $3,600 in October. It made back, uh, it took two months to make that back. So November and December made back the October losses. And it finished the year. That, that P&L right there is accurate for the year. 40674 That was the year of 2017. So 
you can see the late 16 numbers. That's when it was converted from a weekly to a daily to be run on a, more of a retail mindset, right? A lot of retail, um, a lot of retail is very heavily focused on day trading, scalping, short-term stuff. What I focus on is more positional, more levels, sticking with an idea. And I'm going to show people how they can institute or execute those ideas on maybe a longer term scale or multiple shorter term scales. But the idea still being the same is that if the model says I want to be long euros, I want to be long euros. And that's really the foundation. So think about it from your trading. If you could eliminate the stress, the emotion, the frustration, and just really worry about executing the, these trades, um, you know, what would it mean to you, to your, to your business as a trader, your approach, to have something that's, that's solid to really deal from, right? I mean, one of the things you get approached with as a retail trader is you get approached with system after system, approach after approach. Not many that actually tend to perform that well, but some some that really allow you to do what you're able to do and ones that really take away and this is my this is my vision of what really changes the the playing field for the retail trader right the retail trader tends to focus so greatly on what they cannot do or what they don't have right i can't tell you how many times i've heard the story of well the market makers took my money or the clearing firm you know widened their spreads and took my stops. It, there's always just some very tiny little reason why you lost it. What I'm building and what I'm trying to help all my subscribers do is build a system for themselves, build an approach that says, if you're going to be wrong, you're going to be wrong at a point where the market did not, uh, was not able to trade before, was not able to trade above or below. You're going to put yourself in an approach, remember from the beginning, a position to win. And when you lose, because inevitably you're going to have losses, you're always going to have losses in this game. The trick is, the trick is that your losses have to be small, whereas your wins have to be larger. I can't tell you how many traders I've met that do the complete opposite. They'll take their full stops on a loss, and they'll take just ticks, just ticks out of a win. Right? I'm going to talk about how to avoid your your very short-term stops, um, absolute irrelevant stops, things that just don't matter, right? Things that don't really matter to your trading. And so many people are always approaching this from a, you know, how do I take this quick fix? It's not about a quick fix. It's about a path that takes you, right? That takes you from where you want to be, from where you sit now to that end goal, that achievability of how you're going to do it. So, with that being said, I want to get on the charts now. I want to get on the charts, and I want to show you what this stuff looks like from a position of strength. And so I talk about the trade model. Can everybody see my charts here? I have a euro dollar. Just type in a quick yes if you guys all see some charts. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same screen. Yes? Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, so talking about foundation. I want to pull up real quickly and just show you what some of this looks like. Um, I want to pull up the the uh, the daily trade model and show you show you what it looks like from a standpoint of what an order looks like, um, what it looks like on the screen, how it how it's really coming into play here. So I want to look at the most recent um, month of December and show you show you euro dollar. So euro dollar was a trade. Here, I'll pull this up here real quick, and then I'll get it out of your way, and I'll get back on the charts. But I'm going to show you this euro dollar. So euro dollar coming into December was a long trade, and you can see it was executed on the 11th of December. So I have euro dollar. So these are all the markets the daily model covers, and this is the daily model. Dated. Um, these are all the markets it covers: euro, dollar, yen, pound, dollar. But let's take a look at euro dollar. So. It enters the trade, the model trade, at 1766 in, in a long direction, okay? It has an initial stop at 1713. So this is the trade, the, the 11th of December. It enters the trade long, and here's your buy zone, euro dollar. Here's your stop loss, 1713. 
And these daily model trades, the daily model trades do not come with set pre predetermined uh, targets. The, the trades that will make money will either exit like Euro dollar did. Euro exited the last day of the year. Um, the model took it off at 2010. But we're not, it is a trend following model in nature. And so what we're attempting to do with the model, what we're attempting to do with the model is um, grab as much profit as is there. And so you see what the model did. And so let's think about it from this standpoint. Let's look at, let's look at the trade when it goes on. This is what the trade looks like. It's Euro dollar. You're going long right here. 1766. And this is what you see. So when I talked earlier about risk versus reward, this is all you know. You don't know whether the market's going to go higher. You don't know whether the market's going to go lower. All you know is what you're willing to risk and where you're willing to deal. Those are the two known factors in your trading. And so once you admit that, once you say, well, this thing could go up or it could go down. I have something I build or something I'm following that tells me it should go higher, but I'm willing to risk this 1713 level. That's what I'm willing to risk. And ho hopefully my reward's going to be much higher, um, but I'm willing to risk about 53 ticks in this trade. That's perfect. Now you've, now you've accepted what your downside can be. You've accepted it. Now, now you have to look at it from a standpoint of, um, now you have to look at it from a standpoint of what is my upside. So this trade stays active until the 30th of, um, or the, I'm sorry, the 29th of December. And it ends up taking a couple points out of it. It takes 244 ticks out of the, out of the um, market. On, remember what I said, it's one standard lot. It's one standard lot. It's $2,440 on one standard euro lot. Obviously, if you're trading smaller, it's going to be less. But that gives you a really good gauge of what it is you're trading for there, right? That's the idea. It gives you a really good gauge of what you're trading for there. So the idea with the foundation is that, one, you know the direction you want to trade. This is, this is the important part of euro dollar and following the model. You know what your job is. Your job is to be long of euros, right? So when I talked about alleviating that stress, alleviating that stress of walking in every day like your typical day trader and saying, well, I have no idea, no idea what I want to do in euro. I have no clue what I want to do in euro. Well, what I'm saying is I know how I want to be positioned. So I have subscribers that will trade it from entry to exit. I have others that will look at it from a shorter term perspective and say, well, I still want to day trade it. Okay, that's fine. If you want to day trade it, what is your job? Your job is to buy it, buy as close as you can to the bottom, right? That's your job. So the other component of what I teach, the other component of what I teach is um, levels, right? So the foundational approach is levels. That's what's taught in this class. We use the daily model as one component of what we do. The other big thing, I will tell you the, the main discretionary component of what, what I do, is teaching levels. Uh, several people who are probably in here have probably heard me speak about levels. Now, what is a level? A level is simply a spot in a market that at one point, you know, just look at it like this, euro dollar. This spot in late or in mid September is the spot that buyers could no longer take euro dollar above. It creates a level. It's a level on top. It's a level that creates sell side action for the euro. The next visit up there, three and a half months later, or almost three mo full months later, you get what? The exact same reaction. The exact same reaction. So here's the difference. Here's how I'm looking at the market from a level standpoint. From a level standpoint, I'm looking at the market saying, well, 
where could the market no longer trade higher than? It could no longer trade higher than 20, 2070 or whatever the, whatever the case may be. That's what is known as a level. A level is a spot that is shown to you in advance, right? So when I talk about alleviating the stress, stopping the guesswork, here's what you have when, you, when you're analyzing levels. You have the market already showing you where it's willing to act, right? When you look at a euro dollar such as this, you look at euro dollar and you say, wow, this entire run up stopped at one spot 2092. That's where euro dollar stopped. Market. Carry it over. The next time it trades there, now is an opportunity to deal. Now is an opportunity to deal. And why is this level important? It's important because the market decided that that was the spot that it was going to move 500 ticks lower on. That was the spot the market was going to move 500 ticks lower on. Same reaction? I don't know. It hasn't moved 500 ticks. But the same sell side reaction, it traded 2092 on September 8th. It traded 2081 yesterday within 11 ticks. Now, if you don't think that's accurate, I don't know what in the world you're looking for, right? The idea is that you're looking at it from a standpoint of where has a market shown me reaction? It's powerful, powerful stuff. It's powerful, powerful stuff. It works on multiple time frames. It works on every market because it is the market. It is not an indicator. It is not um, trailing, uh, lagging. It is simply a spot where the market shows you it will or will not go higher or lower. That's what a level is. Let's look at them a little bit longer. Let's look at euro. I'll just stick with this euro example for a minute. I want to I want to con compel here with the idea of levels. All right, so let's think about levels. So I have on my screen a um, monthly a monthly chart of euro dollar, right? So we'll start this back in the we'll start this back in the the 90s, the 80s, the 90s. And what are we doing? We're just marking bottoms and we're marking tops. Why? Because this is the spot the market wouldn't go higher. This is the spot it wouldn't go lower. Finally it breaks, it moves lower, right? So there's going to be more than one level. What we want are the outside levels, right? That's what we're looking for. Um we create our 160. So again, just kind of look how important this stuff becomes because I'm going to show you years and years in advance a level working. All right, so this is 148 in September of 92. Breaks through there in 2008, creates a new high, breaks back below, right? Same level, breaks back below. So here's the idea. Here's what you want to be thinking about with levels. With levels, you want to be trading away from the level. So that means above a level, you want to be looking for buy side. Below a level, you want to be looking for sell side. Does that make sense? Above a level, above a level, you're looking buy side. Below it, you're looking sell side. Why? Because you're determining who is in charge of the market. So the idea of levels and why levels are so strong and so compelling is huge, right? So the idea, the idea that you have an indication. So if the, if the market came in and took this level, 149 in euro, and sold it, the next time up to 149, what would the thought process be? If the last time the market was up at 149, the market sold 149 in the euro, what would the thought process be the next time it's up at 149? It'd be sell side, wouldn't it? That would be the thought process. So when I talk about risk versus reward, right? Risk versus reward. How much do I have to risk to get above that versus if I get a rotation lower in my direction, my reward is multiples of the risk. So remember before when I said the whole idea of successful trading for the retail trader. Well, it's for any trader. It doesn't matter whether you're retail, institutional, hedge fund. It doesn't matter what you are. The whole idea is risking less than you stand to make, right? That's the whole idea. 
risking less than you stand to make. Why? Because that's what pays over time. That's what pays over time, right? It allows you to be able to come into a market, lose two times, three times, four times. One winner pays for every one of those versus what's the, what's the other side of that, right? What's the other side of that? What, do, what does a lot of retail tend to do? A lot of retail tends to come in, win very small, very small, very small, very small, and then one trade takes every penny of that and then some away, doesn't it? So the difference in levels, the difference in levels trading is this. The difference is that with levels comes the ability to say, not only do I know that all I have to do is risk above this, if I get one rotation below, I'm getting paid 20 times. If I make a move above, I've lost, what, one, two, three big figures? Same thing once it breaks through the other way. Same thing once it breaks through the other way, right? So I take a small loss here. I'm still doing the same thing, which means I'm looking to sell. I'm looking to sell against this edge. Once that edge holds, I just got paid 20 big figures versus maybe two to three of a loss. Same level, right? This level's been there since 1992. This is now 2009. This is now 2011. It's the same level. It's the same level. And what it is, the market has showed you, we will not buy it up above this level. They did here briefly, and then they took it right back below. They bought it up here briefly for several months in 2008, and it would have cost you some money here. It absolutely would have cost you a few bucks. Then they took it right back down below and showed you the true direction. Same thing at the bottom side, bottom edge, top edge. You'll hear me refer to those, bottom edge, top edge. Those are levels, and all you're looking for is consolidation, you're looking for consolidation and where the market is not willing to take it higher or lower. And that's what creates your edge. Because when it creates your edge, what it's giving you is the ability to control your risk to a very tight degree while also maximizing what your upside is, right? That's what it's doing for you. All right, so let's, let's play this through a little bit. Is everybody tracking? Is anybody lost yet? I mean, I think it's pretty easy stuff, but I teach it all the time. Is everybody kind of clear on looking at edges, what I'm looking at? And I'll give you guys some uh, time for questions at the end, but I just want to make certain you guys are tracking, following. All right, I'm not seeing any responses, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, the idea being level, level, all right? So if, if we're trading away from a level, what are we thinking when we're below top edge? We're thinking sell. What are we thinking when we're above bottom edge? We're thinking long. Sell rotation, buy rotation. Sell rotation, buy rotation. There's a buy rotation that would have failed. So here's the idea. Here's the idea. Winner, 20 plus big figures. Winner, 20 plus big figures. No opportunity for sell. Opportunity for long, which would eventually stop out. How many big figures would you have lost in a stop out here? Remember, this is a monthly chart. It's a monthly chart, couple big figures. So you, you have about 4,000 ticks to work with. Can you afford to give up a few? Of course. Where's the next level? On the bottom, basically down this 105. Holds, holds, holds. Which way are you thinking to deal? Which way are you thinking to deal when you're approaching a bottom edge from the top side? You're thinking long, 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 long. And think about what this rotation is. This is real life right now in the euro. What is this rotation? This is back to this edge, right? And I'll get a lot more descriptive on how I do levels, but this is this edge right now. You're in it right this second in euro dollar. You're in it right now, and you're at what edge? The edge you'd want to be focused on sell side, wouldn't you? That's how you'd want to be focused right now in euro dollar, sell side. Why? Your risk to get above it is only a couple big figures. Your risk for rotation back is enormous, isn't it? That's why. That's why you're focused on the sell side. So again, this is not about time frame. 
It's not about time frame. It's about levels. People will ask me the question, well, what time frame do you trade? I don't trade time frames. I trade levels, right? This 120 level, it's on a monthly. It's on a daily. It's, that's, that 120 level is there. It's there on a daily. It's there on a four-hour chart, right? So now I'll be on a four-hour. It's still there. It's still there. So I'm not trading time frame. I'm trading a level, right? So getting into kind of the second component, this is a nice little segue into the second component that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So I teach levels in my, in my subscription service. I teach levels. I, I deliver the model, and I deliver morning and nighttime analysis to the markets. But even with that, I do find that there's a, a fair amount of time that people have to study, um, have to have to spend time understanding this. And so I wanted to, to establish one really simple component that would allow my subscribers to profit right away. And I did this based on the, uh, based on the idea that I have a lot of people that are very smart who are um, learning this stuff and have been studying it for months and months, if not you know, into the years. And I'm still seeing some very similar uh, moves across, across uh, traders. So what I decided is I said, listen, I have all these great resources. I use um, Bloomberg charts. I have my model. I have a lot of great resources. Let's use them. And so I do for my subscribers. So what I introduced last month, and this is really, I'm really excited about this one going forward. I introduced the ability to just take the levels, and then I added one element, which is a uh, timing indicator. I added this element of timing because I wanted to make it a little, um, a little more accurate than the level alone, which says, for my traders, my subscribers, what I've done is on a four-hour uh, window, I've taken each of the markets we'll cover, and I said, okay, guys, I'm going to give you six times throughout the day that you could potentially look for a trade. So what I've done is I've make it, made it real regimented for them to be able to look at it. And so what that does is every four hours, so not uh, 5 o'clock a.m., so it's always East Coast time. Um, it starts at... 5 p.m. the night before, so tonight at 5 p.m. we'll be looking at Thursday's uh, trading day, okay? So tonight at 5 p.m. New York time starts Thursday's action. So we'll look at 5 p.m. at 9 p.m. I do not look at the 1 a.m. Um, because I'm asleep, and then I'll start to look at it again when I get up right around 5 a.m. in New York. We'll look at it again at 9 a.m. in New York, 1 p.m., and then again 5 p.m., and, that, and that's how it, will, how it will work. So every four hours. So let's walk you through this. I have, as I just mentioned, the, a timing indicator I use. This timing indicator is built to basically look for reversals. And so what it is, is if you've had an up run, you're looking for um, a move lower. A, a number one on the bottom is a timing indicator indicating that we're going to now look for downward movement in euro dollar. So we're putting two components together. We're putting together a level, right? So you guys saw me go through levels, and this is, this is on four-hour charts that we're doing this, plus a timing indicator. So once our timing indicator tells us that it is time now to be short euro, what we are doing is putting a level on it. And in this case, it was 2070 short in the euro. So this signal came out yesterday. This is an active order. This is an active order working right now. Uh, sell 2070, the stop loss, it should say 08, I, that's a misprint. It's a, a 38 tick stop loss. Um, I'll just fix that. It's, it's a 38 tick stop loss and a take profit at 1854. So right away, everything you've heard me say today, how does that stop loss and take profit play out with what I've been telling you all day, this position to win type of talk? I'm risking 38 ticks to make what? 216. I mean, if, if that's not superior risk reward, I don't know what is. And that's what everything we're built on does. So right away with this timing indicator, if there's not a level, we're not trading, right? So let me just walk you back. Let's walk back to November and let me walk you through a couple weeks of, of this, uh, 
of this trading. This is just Euro dollar, and I'll walk you back through a little bit of this. So think about what I'm looking at. I'm looking at level. I'm looking at timing indicator. So here's timing indicator. A one on top indicates long trade. A one on the bottom indicates short trade. So this is early November. Long trade at 1580, I think it was 1583. Take profit was um, up at 1828. So again, it was a 245 tick winner, all from this indication. So the order goes in like this. At one o'clock on the 7th of November, the order goes in and says, be long of Euro dollar, stop at 1548, right? 35 tick stop, 245 tick take profit, and and then it's either going to work or it's not going to work. Remember, the, the things you don't know about the market is whether it will go up or whether it will go down. The things you do know in your trading are where you're willing to deal, in this case, 1580s, what you're willing to risk, in this case, about 35 ticks. The rest is up to the market. All you can do is position for it, right? You can't make it happen. Let's look at the next trade. The next trade on November 20th, see the positive one? All right, so that's the signal. That's the timing signal. It is not the level. This 1725, that is the level. So this one is not, not a market order. This is a limit order. So this limit order would be established on the 20th of November to buy them at 17 and a quarter, take profit above 19. It takes profit. This one makes about just shy of two grand, I think. I think it's just shy of 2,000 bucks. So you have beginning of November, 245 tick winner. Late November, 200 tick winner. Now it's looking for short. Do you see the, do you see the negative on bottom, the negative count? All right, so that's your sell signal, but it needs a level. And I will teach what levels are in my class. I will teach it in the course, but I'm just showing you on a chart really quick what they look like. This is your level highlighted in purple. So even though you get a sell signal, you do not have a level. It is a limit order to sell as the market's rising. So it sells right into it at 1928, and it's looking for the same level on the bottom, 1730. 200 ticks to the downside. What is this trade? Same thing, buy side at a level. It just rinse, repeat, just rinse and repeat. And that's what it's doing. And we're doing it over multiple markets, right? We're doing it over currencies, futures. And so you have a real um, diverse look at what's happening here. So for example, Aussie dollar, okay? Here's a four hour, here's a four hour look. Aussie dollar does not have a longer term level here. It has a very short term level one that you could deal on in front of the 50, but it has the negative count. It has the negative count, right? So this is a spot where, although you don't have a long-term level, you could make an argument for a shorter-term trade just based on the fact that risk is so tight. Dollar-Yen, Dollar-Yen is another active order working right this second. Dollar-Yen is an active order working to buy 112.10. This order went in yesterday. So I'll just show you guys a, a live working order and why it's put there, level. So everybody see the count that was put in yesterday. So the order is to deal at the level. The order is not to pay market. The order is not to pay higher. Remember what I talked about very early on. What I talked about is trading from strength. So think about it like this. I always make this analogy. If you were gonna buy a house, and you were gonna buy a house that was valued at a half a million dollars. Are you gonna be a stronger buyer if you can afford to pay cash for that house or if you put down 5%? Well, in this example, dealing from strength says you own that ha house in cash. That way you can handle some movement against you. In trading, it's not about paying full, full cash for your position. What it's about is positioning as close to the support as possible. You always want to be leaning against the strongest thing you can lean against. And in this case, when you're a buyer, you want to be leaning against support. So think about what you know about this 112.10 area in dollar yen. This 112.10 area in dollar yen has held since early December. It created a move up to 113.75, sold off. 
it held again back up to 113.64 held again that's the level you're playing in other words buyers didn't step in at you know 50 ticks higher and hold that level but they held this exact level and they've held it for a month now that's what playing with strength leaning against something looks like right that's what it looks like so this is an active order right and so this is much quicker stuff than the daily model this is a lot more active than the daily model so this really fits a lot of my um, shorter term subscribers um, short term needs and quests and like I said the goal for me was to be able to deliver something on a very systematic approach that gave them a really good shot at being profitable right out of the gate and being able to use those profits to as a foundation for their business right they may want to add things later they may want to alter their trading style but what they really needed was a foundation and a place to be profitable right off the bat to be able to start doing this um, Deborah asked a question how far back do you look for levels that's a good question so Deborah and everyone I do what I call multiple time frame analysis so I'll just here's dollar yen so here's what I would do on a dollar yen chart on dollar yen, I would start on something like quarterly or monthly, um, and it only takes a few moments to get back through a chart. So here's a here's a quarter, uh, uh, sorry, a monthly chart of dollar yen. Well, look, this takes me back, you know, 17 years, pretty quick. So if I know I'm going back here and I'm looking at these spots, and this is what I'm pulling from, I'm pulling from here as I come over. All right, well, that's a really strong spot. That is up near 120s, 125. It's not applicable today. What do I have on the bottom? What's, what's really strong on the bottom? Well, the 70s were strong, but it's, we're not likely to be back down there anytime soon. Um, this 101 to 100 area is pretty strong on the bottom. So then I look at, at dollar yen and say, well, where, where do I actually sit within that? I mean, I sit dead middle. There's no real advantage one way or the other. But within that, I can come into 115 and I can come down to 108 and say, okay, that contains it for the last year. And then as I walk down to a daily, a weekly, four hour, whatever, the idea is that those are the levels I'm working on. And the only thing I'm going to see by coming down to a four hour or one hour chart is what that detail looks like up here. But the idea from a longer term perspective is that those are the big zones to worry about and everything else is just trade in the middle. That's why retail can have such a tough time with lots of activity. You know, if you think about it and, and you look at this dollar yen chart and you say, wow, for the last year it's gone nowhere. It's gone nowhere. But there was plenty of trade within that to get hurt or make some money, right? But if you start to realize, yeah, it really went nowhere, but do you see how easy it was to paint those edges? It was just back down there in September. It was just there in November and December. That was established in November and December. That's 114 and a half. So what happens, what happens if I take that 114 and a half area and now I come down to like a two hour or a four hour chart? Let me make it a little clearer. Let me make it one hour. All right, so I'm looking at 114 and a half, right? That was the level I just designed off the big, off the big picture chart. 113 is not what I care about. 112 is not what I care about. It's 114 and a half. Okay, so here's the question. At 114 and a half, can I find some trade within this and a reason to be a seller? This is the 114 and a half. That traded 114.73. But what happened when it traded 14 and a half? Remember what the idea is as you approach a level. As you approach it from the bottom, the idea is to do what? Be short. As you approach it from the top, the idea is to be long. So if the big picture, if the monthly chart says it's still short, well, how do I want to be treating it? Long or short? If the big picture, if the if the big picture is run by long-term traders, right? Not short-term scalpers, not intraday traders. If the big picture is run by big banks, central banks, hedge funds, big institutions, if they're the ones that create the big picture move, how do I want to treat it? I want to treat it as such a level with the idea, with the idea 
being sell side into it because the big picture has not broken that, right? So think about it. It, it trades through for one hour. That's all it could do. And then the very next hour, what does it do? It explodes lower. And what else did it do? Gave me a negative count. Remember I talked about I have a timing indicator I use. Gave a negative count. Now I go back and I lean against that 114.5 for sell side. Why? Because the big picture, it has not broken. All it did is one hour it got above it. That's all it did and broke back below. Look how it's now holding the 114 and a halves. Still holding. Sell side. Sell side. 114 now trades down to 111s. That's three, almost three big figures, all on diagnosing that one move. And those moves are there all the time throughout markets, right? It's not always there in dollar yen. It's not always there in pound dollar. It's not always there in euro dollar. But when you approach all those markets, you get to see a lot of those moves. And remember, again, what it is I'm looking for. On the daily model, I'm looking for trend following, right? I'm looking for trend following on the daily. What am I looking for on shorter term stuff? I'm looking for levels and counts. That's what I'm looking for. Levels, levels, and counts. That's what I'm looking for. Positive count at the bottom. Negative count at the top. It didn't have the level, so there was no trade. Negative count at the top. Positive count at the bottom. Those things produce and produce and produce. And when you run that across eight or nine markets, that's where you get your opportunity. Right? It's not five opportunities a day, but it's generally going to be several opportunities a week. Right? It's, it's no longer about thinking of this market as, well, the market is going to do exactly what I want it to do. It's not about that. It's about saying, here's what I'm designing as my foundation. Here's what I'm designing as my approach. One, I need a level. That's key. I need a level to deal against. Two, I want something that's going to help me time my entry. Right? Three, I need positive risk versus reward. I need positive risk versus reward. If those elements are there, I will deal. If those elements are not there, I will not deal. Right? So it's about being absolutely steadfast in your approach and saying, if those things are not there, I am not dealing. I absolutely refuse to deal. And until you start to exhibit that type of, of um, discipline, Nothing's going to change, but you have the ability to change that today. You have the ability to change that today and, and walk in tomorrow and say, all right, here's what I need. Here are the elements that have to be in place. And the bottom line is I could think this is the most fantastic trade I have ever seen, but the risk does not meet my profile. I have to risk three to make one. It's not worth it. It's, it's silly money. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So the idea being, I'm going to continually trade from a position of strength, and I'm going to alter my 2018 to now look like the strongest it could possibly look. I am now going to be that trader that took my account from 35 grand to 70 grand that got hired by the prop firm. I'm not going to be the trader that went from 50 grand to 35 grand that came within one day of, of being out of business. Right? That's not going to be what I am. So before I get to questions, I just want to show you guys what we are offering you today. We have a special for this group that we're doing. We're giving you one month in the class. I'm going to teach my three-day class, so I'm going to teach you all about the levels. I'm going to teach you everything I know about uh, putting yourself in that position, but I'm going to give you one month to my 50K program. So what this 50K program is, it's me, my actual live trading uh, to get to 50 grand in P&L by next October. Um, so we wanted to offer this today. It's $99, one month of access. So we'll have access through the end of January. You'll get the three-day course. Um, you'll get on-demand three-day course of ones I've done in the past, but you'll get it live um, not this week but the following week. You'll get access to the four-hour trade model. You'll get access to my daily trade model, and you will get um, – 8.30 a.m. live briefing in the market every day, Monday through Friday, 
and you will get FX reports in the evening and U.S. Open Commodities Future reports in the morning. So all that for the bargain basement price of $99, and uh, I hope some of you take the opportunity to join us. We certainly look forward to, to having you, but I'll leave that up there. There's the sign-up sheet, and it, I'll take questions. We have a few more minutes. I don't think I'm that close on time. I think I have another almost 20 minutes, so um, I'll take questions if you guys have questions. And if, um, if not, I can get back on charts after a few. But I did want to give anybody an opportunity that wanted to see the, the sign-up and the offer, um, what we have going. And I certainly encourage you to check this out because this is a pretty unbelievable price for, for what we've uh, put together here. Do I have any questions on the, um, the offer or on charts at all? I'm happy to look at uh, anything you guys want to take a look at. All right. No questions? I can't tell if they're being typed or nobody has any. Yeah, so somebody asked how, um, how do you trade currency? Well, so for example, in currencies, you know, brokers will allow you to deal basically in, in very small increments. I think down to as small as like a $1,000. Um, when I call it a standard lot, it's a hundred thousand position. It's uh, but you, currencies you can really break down to kind of any denomination you want. Um, it's it's really from a standpoint of, of flexibility, it's a pretty impressive thing. Um, how much after the first month? Well, if you decide you're going to go past the first month, we'll uh, we'll certainly make you deal. We we had offered five hundred dollars for the year. I don't think that price is there anymore, but. Um, if you decided it was for you, we'll, we'll figure something out along the way. Uh, yes, all trade sessions are recorded. Um, they're all in there, and they're all on demand. So we have a lot of clients, for example, in Asia, a lot of Australian clients, people that do not see their way into um, a New York type of morning. And um, they, they come in and listen to the presentations. We also do a Monday teaching class, so four times throughout the month on Mondays you get an education class, and that's throughout the whole year. Um, somebody asked the question, can I take a look at gold? Here, let's pull up, I'll pull up gold. Um, so let's take a look at the gold market here. Now gold actually had the negative count today, didn't have a phenomenal level, but here I'll show you gold on the count. Um, Here's your gold chart. Here, let me just take a look. Let's do what I do, which is kind of go down from a bigger time frame. Uh, works the same way in gold. Gold is a market we cover in the model as well as the four-hour model. So you get plenty of gold trades either direction. Gold has been on a tremendous um, up run here. So you can see this is the timing indicator at work. So on the 14th of December, the timing indicator indicates long trade in gold at 12.58. Uh, we were at 13.23 earlier today. We're 13.12 right now. Um, but this is gold on a four-hour, which is, what again, what I follow. Um, we didn't have the, the, probably the prettiest level. That's why we kind of I'm still assessing it. I looked at it at the 10 o'clock hour. But uh, this is probably as close as I could come to a level in gold. And, again, it didn't really trade back to where I would have been overly interested. But there's your negative count. That came last night, and um, again, we're starting to see some, some reaction lower, but I would still anticipate further downside in gold for the uh, immediate, immediate future. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I did answer that part, Leif. The all trading sessions are recorded. Um, so somebody asked a question, what was the level on E-minis? Uh, E-minis is, being that we're at brand new highs, there are no levels to the top side right now. Um, the model, the model is actually short coming into today, so it looks like the model itself will stop out of E-minis, but we're not going to have any levels on top just because we're at brand new highs. Um, I mean, I'll show you how I would diagnose E-minis. I'd be looking at that 2698 area, um, on the bottom side, 2640s is going to contain a fairly good amount of buying, but ES is, is a bit of a different looking beast just because um, it's such one way. I mean, if you go look at, 
if you go look at ES, let's look at, let's all just pull up the generic here. Um, but if you go look at ES going back to, I don't know, even just most recent years, um, you will get this indication that this is a pretty, pretty straight up one way market. I mean, you can see there's not a lot of levels to lean against, especially resistance. There is no resistance up here. This is um, E-minis, again, just to point out, timing indicator at the bottom, timing indicator at the bottom. We're not on any type of negative count. Uh, the model was looking at a little different logic, to be short. Um, but yeah, I mean, E-minis are just on an absolute tear. Yeah, Bitcoin, uh, so I did not mention this, guys, but Bitcoin is a market we cover. I'm currently not trading it just because it's still pretty uh, it's still pretty steep in terms of the margin, but I'm looking at the future. So Bitcoin will absolutely be a market that gets covered, um, and it will be part of the model as well as the four hour. But for it to do so, it's going to need to get a little more liquid in the futures for me to be able to deal it. But let me just show you what Bitcoin looks like. Um, this is Bitcoin. Right again. So what I'm looking at is negative count uh, takes you to the bottom. Positive count from the bottom back to the top. Negative count. So you can see I'm big on the timing indicator when it's at a level, and it's a great tool to be able to use. So Bitcoin, I do anticipate over um, the shorter time span being being able to deal in it. But right now, it's just not real conducive to a lot of retails. Um, to their trading account. So it's not something we're doing presently, but it, it will be covered. And we do cover it in the room. Uh, uh, if we sign up today with this offer, when do we owe? When, oh, so you'd start right away. RRS, if you sign up, you'd start right away. You'd, start, you'd have access to the room immediately. Um, and then you would start getting reports today. So you would your, your access would start right away. Um, let me pull up the uh, let me pull up the PowerPoint one more time and you, let you guys get an idea there. Um, so the class is going to actually be January 16, 17, and 18. Your access would start today. You would be live for the morning brief tomorrow morning. You would get all reports tonight, uh, and you'd start getting everything that all members get. The only difference is for your $99 fee, your your only access is for one month. Um, that's the only that's the only catch there. Um, so I answered the ES. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's the presentation. So again, I thank you guys tremendously for for listening. I always enjoy speaking. Um, if you guys have any other questions, you're welcome to to contact Compass FX. Um, as I said, my name is Mark Coe, and uh, thank you guys for having us on. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's been, um, it's been a very nice afternoon. I look forward to a great 2018. Like I said, this stuff's kicking out trades starting right away. It started at the beginning of the year, so we'll, uh, we'll continue with it, and um, we'll keep you guys informed. And definitely, if you're, if you're not going to take part now, definitely keep us in mind, and we look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you again. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I can add here, and I don't know if there's any more questions, but I did want to say uh, thanks again. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day and um, great time with the, the rest of the presentations. So I will bid farewell. <laughs>